A medida que nuestros cerebros se desarrollan, ganamos otras cualidades únicas a los humanos. Somos conscientes de nuestra propia identidad e individualidad. Logramos la habilidad de pensar por nosotros mismos. Y estamos formando memorias que durarán toda una vida. Como nuestro primer día en la escuela. Podemos recordar lo que estaba sucediendo alrededor nuestro, pero la acción real está ocurriendo en el interior. El cerebro es una masa de 100 mil millones de células nerviosas. Combinadas, ellas generan suficiente electricidad para mantener una bombilla alumbrando todo un día. Las células se comunican empleando impulsos eléctricos. Cada impulso es un diminuto fragmento de pensamiento o memoria. Cuando oímos una nueva palabra, nuestros oídos convierten el sonido en impulsos eléctricos en nuestros cerebros. El cerebro puede aprender porque las conexiones entre las células cerebrales no son permanentes. El cerebro se reconecta a sí mismo. Las células nerviosas envían zarcillos, llamados axones, que forman constantemente nuevas conexiones. Las células se encuentran en un espacio diminuto llamado una sinapsis. Sustancias químicas salvan el espacio para permitir que el impulso continúe la cadena. Las conexiones nuevas forman un patrón, una nueva memoria. Aprendemos haciendo nuevas conexiones entre las células cerebrales y luego reforzándolas mediante la repetición. Cuanto más intenso es el reforzamiento, tanto más probable que la memoria se fije. Cuando alguien nos pide recordar esa memoria, el mismo patrón de axones se activa y la memoria vuelve a la vida. Nuestro cerebro responde enviando mensajes a los nervios que accionan los músculos de nuestros brazos. Levantamos nuestra mano. En la niñez, nuestros cerebros tienen preferencia por aprender, y ellos están creciendo rápido. El crecimiento rápido permite a nuestros cerebros formar fácilmente nuevas conexiones. Y mientras nuestros cerebros se mantienen aprendiendo, nuestros cuerpos hacen lo mismo. to say that events that occur during infancy, especially transactions with the social environment, much more than with the physical environment, are indelibly imprinted into the structures that are maturing in the first years of life. So the importance of this is, um, is really huge in the sense of thinking about the next generation of children. In the infant mother diet, And that as a result of this, the child has now more complex, expanded states of consciousness. This is more than behaviors. Again, this is, more, this is essentially moving into, if you will, the subjective, the intersubjective, the existential realm. And he said also that it generates a mutual mapping of the elements of each interacting state of consciousness into each other's brains. The neurons that fire together, wire together. 
The more they fire together, the stronger the connection becomes. However, some experiences have a greater impact than others. The experiences that have the greatest impact on the wiring of the child's brain are those that happen during a brain's growth spurts. During growth spurts, dendrites at the end of the neuron grow like crazy, a process called blossoming. If during this time a child's experience causes a neuron to fire, these new dendrites will get wired into circuits with other neurons. The dendrites that don't fire will wither back and die. This process is called pruning. So during growth spurts, the brain is extremely sensitive to experience. During this period of brain growth, it is experience that will determine which connections get made or blossom, and which do not, and prune back. It's really hard to sell kids on math and science. It's really easy to sell kids on cigarettes. Would it help if we made science illegal? There's another way to make science uh, interesting for people. First of all, we are born scientists. When we're born, we wonder what's out there. We begin to wonder about the sun, life, the stars, uh, what makes the oceans, the weather. We're born scientists. And then something happens. When we hit the danger years, the danger years of junior high school and high school, that's when it's literally crushed out of us. Those are the worst. Every little flower of curiosity, said Einstein, is crushed by society itself. Because we have to learn all these facts, figures, memorization, we think that memorization is science. And that's not true at all. Uh, my daughter had to take the Regents exam once, and she had to memorize all these facts and figures about minerals, crystals for a geology exam. Nowhere did I see the true driving force of geology, which is continental drift. That's the organizing principle for all of geology. And yet the exam was memorizing all the names of the crystals and the minerals. And then later she comes up to me and says, Daddy, why would anyone want to become a scientist? That was the most humiliating event in my entire life. I felt like taking that book and ripping it apart because that exam was crushing, crushing curiosity right out of the next generation. And then we wonder, hey, how come people are not more interested in science? Duh. Einstein, Da Vinci, Edison, they were all geniuses, but were they born that way or did their parents boost their brain power by working with them early on? A world-renowned brain researcher says parents actually make the difference when it comes to bringing out the genius in babies. <gasps> Monarch butterfly, housefly, periodical cicada, little black ant, subterranean termite, monarch butterfly. Yay, all done. Baby Olivia is only seven months yeah. old, and her mom is teaching her encyclopedic knowledge. Henry Hudson, Ferdinand Magellan. What's amazing is that Olivia clearly loves learning. And just watch how advanced this tiny baby is at crawling. Olivia is among hundreds of thousands of children who benefit from the findings of world-renowned researcher and author Glenn Doman whose expertise is in child brain development. Parents from as far as Hong Kong and Barcelona come to the Institutes for the Achievement of Human Potential, which Doman founded 50 years ago in Philadelphia. I'm one of the moms who recently attended the seven-day intense course on how to multiply your baby's intelligence, a course that is a life-changing experience for many mothers because it questions modern conventional wisdom on when our babies are ready to learn. Janet Doman is the director. My father realized that mothers were the best teachers and the tiny kids could learn anything. And if you just put those two together for as much, as, as much time as possible, that you were going to have something spectacular. The Domans say every child has the potential to be a genius. The key, they say, is to begin stimulating your baby's brain from the moment she's born. The first year of life is a critical time. This is the time when the brain is growing explosively. The brain literally grows by use. It grows by use. And if we use it, we're going to grow it. And if we don't use it, especially in the first 12 months, then you literally will lose brain cells. You won't have um, as much brain power 
as you would have had Benjamin Franklin, William Penn. Jim and Barbara Braun believe that philosophy has boosted the brain power of their three youngest children, who learn to read as toddlers. Six-year-old Madeline now enjoys reading Shakespeare. No other painting of a Christian subject dominates our imagination with the same power as Da Vinci's Last Supper. 